Ever wondered where black people really come from? Is their skin color just a result of too much sun exposure? Or is there more to the story? In today's video, we dive into what the Bible and history have to say about the origins of black people and uncover some surprising truths that might just change the way you see humanity. Now you might think the Bible has some clear-cut explanation for different skin colors, right? Well, let's break it down. According to the good book, we all come from Adam and Eve, created in God's image. But here's where things get interesting. Some folks have tried to use the curse of ham story to explain black skin. Sounds legit, right? Wrong. That curse was actually on Canaan, Ham's son, not Ham himself or all his descendants. It's got nothing to do with skin color or Africans. How about the name Ham itself? It sure must mean something, right? Well, let's look at what the great book has to say. Genesis 10, verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. This verse outlines the descendants of Ham and their associated regions, which have traditionally been linked to Africa and the Middle East. For example, Cush is often associated with Ethiopia, or regions in Africa, while Mizraim is associated with Egypt. However, the Bible does not explicitly describe these regions in terms of race or skin color. In Hebrew, the name Ham, Ham, pronounced as Cham, is often interpreted to mean hot or heat. This meaning is derived from the Hebrew root word that refers to warmth or heat. So the name Ham could be associated with the warmer regions where his descendants are traditionally thought to have settled, such as parts of Africa and the Middle East. While the Bible does not provide a specific explanation of the meaning behind Ham's name, this linguistic association with heat is one of the common interpretations based on the Hebrew language. Now let's look at some pretty cool people of African descent mentioned in the Bible. We've got Zephaniah, a prophet with Cushite roots. Simon of Cyrene, the guy who helped Jesus carry his cross, was from Africa. And let's not forget the Ethiopian eunuch, one of the first non-Jewish converts to Christianity. And how can we possibly forget the Queen of Sheba, who visited King Solomon? So rather than backing up racist ideas, the Bible's more about everyone being equal, no matter where they're from or what they look like. Now that we've gotten the biblical version of the story down, let's discuss what science says about people of a darker skin tone, AKA Middle Eastern, AKA Africans or black people. To do this, we'd have to go way back in time. All the evidence, fossils, genetics, you name it, points to Africa as the birthplace of humanity. The oldest Homo sapiens fossils found in Morocco are over 300,000 years old. Uh, the whole cont African continent probably was involved in the emergence of our species. Uh, naturally, if we move beyond 300,000, further back in the past, possibly there is a point of uh, emergence of the very first Homo sapiens. African populations have the highest genetic diversity, which is a big clue to our origins. Every non-African population, they all come from groups that left Africa about 50 to 70,000 years ago. So in a very real sense, we all have African ancestry. All evidence shows that life began in Africa and later left Africa to go into Europe and cross Asia, the land bridge into North America and South America, but all began in Africa. Picture this. About 200,000 to 300,000 years ago, the first humans pop up in Africa. These early humans, they had dark skin, and for good reason, protection from the sun. Research in anthropology and evolutionary biology suggests that early humans developed dark skin as an evolutionary adaptation. So dark skin was the original model for our species. How about light skin, AKA Caucasians? That came much later. So in a way, we're all originally black. Mind blowing, right? Even giraffes know they are black with white stripes, not the other way around. Now the question you're probably asking is, why then did humans end up with different skin tones? You see, as humans left Africa and spread across the globe, they faced new challenges. Dark skin became nature's sunscreen, protecting people living in scorching environments against UV damage. But in less sunny places, too much melanin can lead to vitamin D deficiency. So, lighter skin evolved to soak up more of that vitamin D in cloudier regions, or regions that don't receive much sunlight throughout the entire year, unlike most parts of Africa. So no, black people aren't black just because of dirt, as some idiots on the internet might suggest. The black skin is an evolutionary superpower that developed over thousands of years. 
The pigment that gives our skin its color has two main types, eumelanin, your brown and black pigment, and pheomelanin, the redhead special, giving us red and yellow tones. People with darker skin have more eumelanin, which is like having built-in sunscreen. But here's the thing, even the darkest skin can still burn, so don't skip the SPF. Other traits like eye shape and hair texture adapted to local conditions. But get this, these changes are super recent in evolutionary terms. How recent? Well, light skin in Europeans might have only evolved about 8,000 years ago. That's like yesterday compared to our 200,000 plus year history in Africa. Now, while science gives us the biological lowdown, cultural views on skin color have been all over the place. Ancient Egyptians, they painted themselves with all sorts of skin tones. Greeks and Romans noticed differences, but didn't make a big deal about skin color. Our modern ideas about race, they mostly came about during European colonialism. It's crucial to understand that a lot of our current views on race and skin color are more about recent history and culture than actual biology. So what's the takeaway from all this? We all share common African roots. Skin color is a complex trait shaped by evolution, not a sign of separate races. The Bible's actually all about everyone being equal. Our modern ideas about race? They're mostly cultural, not biological. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave us a comment and subscribe for more of this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace!